Hello and welcome to Raise the Game, the podcast. My name is Ray Langan, school motivational speaker, and this is the place to be if you want to get ahead in your school study and your exams. And this is uh, this is a podcast. I'm also simultaneously um, recording this for YouTube and uh, Facebook and Twitter and all the different social media and yeah super excited to be with you guys and i i know uh for a lot of you right now this is a very very difficult time obviously with the pandemic and really uh the title of this cast is really how to how to stay motivated when you're so demotivated so if you're struggling right now when it comes to school and study and your exams um you know and certainly for the class of 2020 the leaving cert students my heart goes out to you guys because uh, this is such a difficult time. The leaving cert is, is, is a difficult time anyway. It's a very stressful time. And, and certainly when it gets to April, you know, this is the time when all the cramming happens. So you're putting in the hours, you're starting to build momentum, you're looking at June, and it's gonna push, 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 push for the last, last five or six weeks and get the job done and get finished. And then you can get on and enjoy your summer. So it's a rite of passage for a lot of people school's out and you can have a great summer after the exams um but that is not going to happen this year and you know for a lot of you right now uh you're disillusioned you're demotivated you're you're miserable because you're looking at july and august and you're thinking how can i you know keep going until that stage and then there's still uncertainty as to whether that's going to happen or not so um look it's a very 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 difficult time and I studied all summer one time, it was for the Institute's Chartered Accountants, the exams happened at the start of September and it was grueling. So I know what it's like to go through a summer. Also, I'm in my third year training as a counsellor and psychotherapist and I'm struggling with my studies right now Um, and it's difficult. So I have lots of essays to do and you know, for every person it's it's difficult. And I know for a lot of you, um, you know, you've got people on the front lines, so whether it's mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, who are all working in the front lines, whether it's in the hospitals or it's in uh, the supermarkets or carers, um, you know, the the emergency services. And and there's obviously a lot of concern out there. And those people are putting themselves on the line every single day. And um, the purpose really of this is I want to give you I suppose some motivational tips or to help you get a bit more motivated. And the first thing is mindset is crucial. So 80% of our success comes from our psychology, 20% comes from our skills. So being able to speak on camera or public speak, that's a skill. Whereas uh, being able to speed read and mind map, that's a skill. Whereas psychology is really your mindset, it's your motivation, and it is your drive. And where does that come from? And you know, Daniel Pink wrote an excellent book called Drive. He talked about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation is wanting to win a gold medal in the Olympics. It's want to win uh, an All-Ireland medal. It's wanting to get, you know, 350 points in your leaving cert. That's external to you. Internal motivation is that inner drive. It's the love of playing the game. It's the love of doing something. It's the love of playing the guitar. So where do those two things come from? And really what we're talking about here is mindset. And Carol Dweck wrote an excellent book called Mindset. There it is there. And she talks about, you know, people who have either a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. And anybody who has a fixed mindset, and that was was really a very limited way of thinking. And it's thinking things like, I'm no good at maths. You know, uh, these exams aren't going to happen. What's the point? When, When all of that is going through your mind, you know, that's a fixed way of looking at things. Whereas we know in any crisis, there's actually a lot of opportunity because there's a lot of pain. And um, not to demean anybody, because I know up to a million people are in receipt of benefit here in Ireland. And a lot of people have, you know, their jobs, their businesses are all frozen right now. So it's hard not to be thinking with anything but a fixed mindset. But there's also a lot of people out there who are looking at the opportunities falling out of this. And if you look at technology, it's thriving right now. Zoom, I think their shares have gone through the roof. Um, You know, anything to do with teaching online, um, homeschooling, uh, baking, all of these type of things are thriving right now. 
um, you know, the, the, the uh, retail stores, um, anything to do with food, um, planting food at home, all of that stuff thriving. So we have to look for the opportunities. So right now it's to think in terms of just what, where's my mindset at? Is it fixed or am, am I thinking in a different way? And, you know, the, the second thing I really want to talk about is because it's an uncertain time is how to become certain in a time of uncertainty. And what I do notice is this, is that my routines, my habits, getting up in the morning and working on my essay, that's giving me certainty right now. Going to my class or attending my class online every Saturday, that's giving me certainty. So for you guys, if you're getting out of bed in the morning and going to your 10 o'clock class online, and I know technology is an issue, some people have bad internet, but if you can stick with your online classes, that gives you certainty. Getting your homework in gives you certainty. Even trying to do an hour or two or three hours every day, half an hour. So for me, when I'm struggling to get motivated to study, I start with half an hour. And I actually start on the hour. I might sit down at eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning and say, okay, I'm gonna give myself half an hour to do that task. That's the Pomodoro technique. That's really, really, really effective. Um, changing focus, number three, is very, very, very important. So right now, focus is crucial. What you focus on is what you feel. And William Glasser, he wrote an excellent book called Choice Theory. And really what he talks about is that our behaviors and our results, um, everything, we're, really our motivations come from uh, our choices. So in any given situation, you know, you can't control what happens externally. So we can't control the pandemic but you can control your response to the pandemic. You can control your thinking around it. And that really comes down to your focus. And if you think about it, you know, for most people, we have the time. Like this is a fantastic time right now. We, you'll never get this opportunity back again where you have so much time. So you've got the time, you've got the materials. By and large, you've got the materials, you've got the resources. In other words, you've got books, you've got access to the teachers. So we have the resources. But what we need right now is resourcefulness. That is creativity. That's determination. That is drive. That is empathy. That is love. That is really emotions. And how do you create emotion? Well, motion, as I say in my seminars, leads to emotion. And the way to build motion is to, and I talk about this in, uh, in the fourth one, and I'll get to that in a second, but the way to control your focus is to look at your thinking. And what controls our thinking is our questions. The quality of our life depends on the quality of our questions. So right now, if you're demotivated, if you're feeling lethargic, if you're not happy, if you're struggling, a lot of the time we're asking ourselves the wrong question. And a lot of thinking comes from asking and answering questions. So if you ask yourself something like, what's the point? What's the point? That's a negative question. Negative question, negative answer. Whereas if you're asking yourself a different type of question, and a guy called Hal Gregerson, he wrote a brilliant book called Questions Are the Answer. So it's really to ask yourself things like, what can I control? So what can I control? Well, I can control what I put into my mouth. I can control my fitness. I can control my eating. I can control um, what I watch, what I consume on TV, on social media, how I spend my time. You know, that is internal control. So how can you, how can I write 300 words today? How can I, you know, blast through a topic in 30 minutes? That is, you know, a way, how can I run my day? And a good way to run your day is just, just run your day the exact same way as if you're in school. So break it into 40 minute blocks and just change subjects every 40 minutes. That is how you change your focus. And um, doing the small things right, number four, and Colonel or Admiral William H. McRaven, and I talk about this guy in my, in my seminars, uh, he, he, uh, he's the guy who talks about getting out of bed in the morning. So this is to make your bed, make your bed. So I, I do a, a segment of my seminars called The Miracle Morning. Anyone who's attended my seminars, you know this. So he talks about uh, making your bed. What it does is it, it completes a task first thing in the morning, and it helps you get busy about your day, and it helps you set the day up to win and when you get one task done right that leads to the second task leads to the third task and that helps you create momentum and momentum leads to motivation so it's really about doing the small things right when you do the small things right the big things happen 
So make your bed. It really, really does make a difference. Plus, when you're going to bed at night, you've got a nice bed that you've made that day. Five, fifth thing is, is it's all about empathy. And what is empathy? Well, empathy is walking in someone else's shoes. And I know from my own experience right now, I'm struggling with my essay. So I know what it's like for you guys to be struggling when it comes to hitting the books. I also, my heart goes out to anyone doing the Leave Insert this year because, <coughs> excuse me, because of the uncertainty, because of um, how difficult the conditions are this year. This is, this is normally a test of endurance, but this year it's a test of survival. So my heart goes out for you guys, but also equally, if you think about empathy is my heart goes out for anyone who has someone living with them right now that is going into a hospital every day, that is getting into an ambulance, that is a guard, that is working in a, in a, uh, in a, in a supermarket. But, but here's the thing that I, I want you to focus on and to think about is that and a lot of students come to me because they, they don't know what they want to do with their life. They're struggling when it comes to choosing a career. And if you notice the people whose jobs have a lot of meaning, because we all want meaning in our work. And Viktor Frankl talks about this in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, excellent book. Um, if you notice, it's the helpers. It's people who are helping right now. Their jobs have real meaning. And for you, before you might think of somebody working in, in a supermarket, a stack and shelves, I would never have liked to do that job. Well, guess what? Their job now is absolutely crucial and critical. Delivery men, post people doing you know the post. That's so important. All these quote unquote ordinary jobs are now extraordinary jobs. So for anyone struggling right now in picking a career and knowing what to do next with their life, but you do want meaning in your life, Pay careful attention to the helpers out there. So look, I hope this um, podcast, and by the way, if you don't see the podcast up for a couple of weeks, it's because I have to go through and get it all set up. But for anybody who's watching this on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, um, I hope this video um, helps. I hope it helps you with a little bit of motivation. I hope you get your mindset right into the right place. And I hope that you're okay. I genuinely do. And your mental health is okay. And, you know, that you're being kind to one another. And, um, you know, if you do like this video, click the like. If you want my coaching, go to Ray Langan or raisethegame.com or A-Y-S-E. And I have a new program coming out soon, an online study skills program called Raise Your Grades. That's coming out very, very soon. Very excited about that. And remember, guys, day by day, we are raising the game.